Damn, that shit was tight, bud. Damn, <laughs> that was awesome. It just, it that was insane. Trick. Kelly, Stacy, Amy, Tiffany, and John, Cherry, she would be older. Mm -hmm. And uh, and me and you, parents. That's in that's in order, oldest to youngest. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up with a family, a big family with lots of kids, is is constant chaos. <laughs> Every day when my parents left, he would be like, it's time for your daily beating. And he would just pin me down, <laughs> knock on my forehead for like an hour. He's just fucking bored. <laughs> Skateboarding was his thing. Whatever he does, he just excels at just that kind of a guy. I think he played baseball, like t-ball, but I, but that was about it. I mean, skateboarding was really his first and only love. I often joke with people that he's got it figured out, <laughs> that yeah. he's really figured it out. To be able to travel the world and do what he loves and to have right. sacrificed so much to get there is pretty remarkable. I mean, Josh is an intelligent kid, and if he wasn't skateboarding, he'd be successful doing something. Josh was this little kid that showed up with his buddies at the skate park like every day. His mom would like, drop him off there for like all day long, and he would hang out on top of the pyramid, and try his tricks and we'd yell at him and and then eventually he started getting older and better and better and then like it's, we started all going skating together and we all rode for like the same skate shop which was board sports when he was about 14 or 15 started showing up at some of the local competitions and it was obvious when he was skating all the time that he was going to make a living from skateboarding i don't know what separates me me from the 10 other friends I had that don't skate anymore, you know? It's like with skating, you get you get so much out of it. You get like an adrenaline rush. You get exercise out of it. You get creative outlet. Is there even another activity that you can do that will like serve all those like outlets? It's not organized sport. It's not a team sport. It's not conventional. And the people who participate are have to be unconventional in their thinking. They have to be pretty DIY in their thinking. You know, we didn't have much money growing up, so it was like you really had to choose what you wanted to spend it on and your time too, you know? Like, the weirdest thing is when I first started skating, it was probably like a year after, my parents bought me a skate video from the skate shop and brought it home. And I turned it on and I was like expecting like some sort of like trick tip or like helps, but, you know? Like I didn't get, like watching it, I was like, I didn't get it. I was like, what is, what are they doing? Are they like, they're just showing off? Like this, this is the whole thing. They're just showing off. And I turned it off, I just went and skated. Like I didn't, I wasn't down. Video parts in the skate industry, they were huge. They were everything. Videos uh, were constantly playing on, you know, on loop pretty much in the shop. When you're a kid and you're learning tricks, you just, you, you know, your, your window is so wide open. You're like, oh, I can do this trick, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna jump on these rails. I'm gonna jump down these gaps. I'm gonna do all the shit that I can do. I'm not, you know, you don't even know why. You're just psyched to land tricks. The longer you do something, you know, you just learn what you like and what you don't like, the longer you're looking at it and seeing it. And so like the more parts that come out and you're watching yourself and, Watching everyone else in the skate industry, you're sort of like picking out things that you like and like steer away from things you don't like and do things you do. And, and you gain more fans just by, you know, having that specific opinion and you find your niche. People spend a lot of time working on video parts and we have six months to make something that Josh and I are both proud of and want people to see. Before this, it was like, there wasn't any, like, sign of doing a full part. So when I got asked to do a part, I was psyched. With Marty, too, like, he's... I appreciate his filming and his eye for things. Normally, they just start off just, like, going on trips and filming and then just kind of, like, getting what you can. I think that's kind of the easiest way to kind of go about doing it, is, is not trying to stress too much about having a pre-idea of what you want to have in it, you know what I mean? And you're just, like, going, traveling, going to the spots, trying to figure it out and put them together, you know? For this video part, I've done SF, Puerto Rico, Japan, Spain, here, Portugal. I think it's easier when you're on a trip and you go to a brand new spot, and that's when you think of the trick, like, oh, this spot's sick, I can do this, and like, you haven't had months to think about it, you know? A 
lot of times my favorite stuff is like when you go to a spot that's like different or unique or weird and you like think of something that works really well with the spot, you know what I mean? Like yeah. whether the, the direction of the bump or the direction of the ledge works better for some tricks and then if you can get something that's out of your normal bag that works well at the spot, I think that's kind of like the most exciting thing. I think when I show up at a spot, like I have like a vision. I just know like, oh, he'll probably film it or shoot it from this angle and like that, it's gonna look dope. I feel like FIBA would look, would be hard to film cool. It's like you want all that. Yeah. It doesn't look good this way. Uh, yeah, I like to try to like capture the trick good, but I also want to make the footage look pleasing. So more than just like a skateboarder could enjoy it as well. Like a lot of videos are mostly like fisheye. And I feel like if you don't know anything about skating or something, you might not enjoy it as much as something that was filmed. Maybe a little more like pleasing to the eye, like composition. And light and all that stuff. He wants to make a creative piece as well. He doesn't just want to like throw a fish eye on and film what, you know, like make it just look like a real escape video. So it's, it's sick that he, that we're both can appreciate those things, you know? I think a lot of young skateboarders feel this way. It's like you kind of judge somebody skateboarding on the tricks they do or like they can do this, they can go down this many stairs, whatever. When somebody has a style like Josh's though, people don't really care what they're doing. It's not as much about that as how they're doing it. Josh is really smooth. He can do the simplest thing. He can just kick flip on flat, no slide of ledge. And it's amazing. And not everybody has that. Very few people have that. For me, I always like people that have power and style and he's definitely one of those people. He can make an awesome part, he can do a demo and actually talk to the kids, and he can just hang out and go out to dinner and have a conversation with them. He's cool, you know? A video part is like your goal in skateboarding because it's your picture that you get to paint, you know? Like, you get to do what you want to do and how you want to do it, and that's what people see when you put it out. And it's weird because it's like, it's just a fucking trick on a skateboard, but like, at the same time, it's just like a brush stroke with a paintbrush, you know? Like, if someone's hyped on my video part, it's like, okay, like I maybe inspired somebody to like get a little more creative on something or even just keep skating. And it's like, I think that's probably why I've stuck with it for so long, you know?